Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Treehouse Live here at E3 2017. I'm Matthew, joined here again by Rich from Treehouse. And we have two special guests today, uh, Mr. Takashi from Monolith Soft and uh, Mr. Yokota from uh, Nintendo in Japan. Today, Raymond's going to be uh, interpreting for us. And we're here to play Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Sorry about that. <laughs> Set us up here, Rich. What are we looking at? Cool. So uh, if you've watched the trailer, you already got a bit of a taste of what the world and the story looks like. So we're going to kind of go a little bit deeper into the combat system and talk about what makes Xenoblade Chronicles 2 special. Right now, we're looking at, uh, I am going to do a little bit of story stuff, I have to admit. Um, and I'm going to have uh, Mr. Takahashi do some uh, explanations of the world as we're playing. But before we do this, I want to get into a bit of the combat so that you can get a sense of what's happening. Um, just, you know, as I'm, as I'm playing and as we're talking. Uh, right now, we're looking at the two uh, sort of protagonists. Uh, we're looking at Rex on the right and Pyra on the left. Uh, it might look like I've got two people in my party right now, but when I get into combat in just a moment, you will see... Uh, let's take a look at them real quick. There's Rex, there's Pyra. Hi, guys. Um, so uh, once we get into combat, you'll see it's really only Rex who's doing the fighting. Uh, Rex is what's called a driver, and then uh, Pyra is his blade. Uh, the blade imbues uh, a character with a weapon, with an ability to, you, to, to fight uh, functionally. Um, so you can see that he pulls out the uh, Aegis Blade, and there I'm going to try to get a better camera angle on them. You can see uh, Pyra is sort of powering him or charging him up. What this allows me to do is on the right-hand side, you'll see uh, the new Arts palette. People who've played the Xenoblade Chronicles series will remember the Arts palette from previous games. It's been streamlined uh, significantly now, so it's just using the four buttons on the right-hand side of the Joy-Con controller. Um, as with the previous Xenoblade Chronicles games, attacks are automatic. And with every attack, you'll see I'm building up my arts. Uh, you can see around the little diamond, um, I'm kind of building up my attack power. I now have all of them fully charged, and I can trigger an attack. Uh, I'm going to launch my anchor shot to pull some HP out. Um, because honestly, this first battle that I'm doing right here is a little bit on the tough side uh, with just one person here. Uh, so I need to pull as much HP as I can. You'll notice uh, my double spinning edge has a side attack bonus. I'm going to try to get around and demonstrate. There, you nice. see that little yeah. halo um, indicates that I was able to get around and pull off the side attack. It's going to be hard to get a back attack on him. Oh, he didn't turn her. No, that uh. didn't pull off. Um, but every time I'm doing these attacks, as I'm doing my arts, or as I'm doing my basic attacks, I'm sorry, uh, I'm charging my arts. And then as I'm doing my arts, I'm charging up my blade's ability to attack using her power. Uh, that's the right hand icon on my arts palette right there. You just saw it went to level one and I've got this flame ability. Uh, pull back and you can see Pyra is charging me up and I just blasted him and now he's on fire. Uh, he'll be dead in just a moment. So we'll do some more uh, combat stuff after that. Now, right now, I'm just showing you uh, what the like absolute basics are about, so that I can start layering some additional complexity on. What, you know, it, it's a very deep RPG, and I want you guys to be able to understand what I'm talking about here. Um, as I'm going into this next battle, though, uh, I wanted to ask uh, Takashi-san a question. The first time I heard the name of this game, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, my first question was, why is this Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and not a follow-up to Xenoblade Chronicles X or some other, uh, some other suffix? あの、今回のあの、タイトルを最初に聞いた時、ゼノブレイド 2 をベースにした探索メインのゲームだったんですけれども、今回どちらかというとゼノブレイド 1 when we were developing uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, it's really a game driven uh, through exploration and in an open world. And with uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, it was really story-driven. And this time, we want to create a story-driven uh, narrative and uh, game. And so we opted to go with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Thanks. Uh, that, that answers a lot of questions, because we do have a, a very strong character focus in this game. And we'll be showcasing a few more of the characters who make up your party in a minute. Um, I do want to point out, by the way, that uh, where we are in development right now, there's still a lot of polish that's going on. So the graphics look really great already. You can see off in the distance. You can, uh, we'll talk a bit about the world 
um, but you can see how much uh, I have to explore before this demo is over right now. Um, but in the months that we have left in development, we're going to see a lot of polish going on. Uh, so bear that in mind as we're playing. Right now, I'm looking out uh, across this field, and up here, you see the head of the Titan on whose back we're riding. Um, over here, you can see the Cloud Sea. Uh, I want to point out that one thing that makes this game very different from other games is all of the land masses are really titans. Uh, you're walking on the backs of these gigantic monsters. This is the only place you live. Uh, you fly around on airships or you ride on the backs of titans, but there's no land mass um, other than perhaps you might be able to see a hint of the world tree that was mentioned in the trailer there. Oh, yeah. um, but we'll be getting into that a little bit later on. Uh, now, Matt, you had a question about this, an observation that you'd made when we were talking. Yeah, right. So, of course, you see the verticality there, and you just mentioned that these are titans that we're uh, exploring right now. And in the original Xenoblade Chronicles game, we had two bodies of land, uh, Bionis and Mechanis, and that kind of set up how you explored that game, and it uh, really kind of drew out the story as well. I was wondering for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, uh, how did you go about building this world, and how do the Titans play into it? あの、ゼノブレイド 1 クジラみたいなやつだったり、いろんな形のあの、アルスが存在してます。and so you th um, I think you will notice as you play this game that these Titans really play an even more of a core role in the game and the story itself. And as you see here, the Titan you see here is kind of like this giraffe-like Titan walking on all fours in a long neck. But there are tr uh, Titans that are in humanoid form. There are Titans that look like whales. So there's all different kinds of Titans. And each of those Titans have a specific type of uh, landscape that they have on their back. So like you see here, there's, um, this one has a lot of uh, lush greenery. And you'll see other Titans may have a snowfield. Other ones are just uh, water-based. So they all play a different role. And they all have um, a very distinct uh, existence within this world. And I think that uh, you'll find it uh, fun exploring. And um, that's really a big part of the story. Awesome. Thank you very much. Now, I've been holding off on uh, getting into more combat because I want to show off another element of the game. Uh, I mentioned that Pyra is Rex's blade, but I actually have another blade uh, with me here, Fudor, and I'm going to conjure forth a new blade. Uh, earlier in the battle, in my very first battle, I picked up this core crystal right here. I used this core crystal to pull out new blades. Uh, when I summon a new blade or conjure a new blade into existence from these core uh, crystals, they bring with them a new weapon type. Um, and then I get access to new arts. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that too, but I wanted to ask Mr. Takahashi to explain a little bit about the relationship between blades and drivers and where that came from. え、バトルえ、たくさん存在します。なのでこれをゲーム中に集めていって自分のプレイスタイル、好きなプレイスタイルで遊んでいくっていうような組み立て方ができるようになってます。So as you saw in the menu option there, you had um, three different blades, uh, you know, the beans that uh, came out of the core crystal. And as you explained earlier, Rich, they uh, these uh, blades provide power and strength to the driver that they're connected with. 
And um, as you see here, there's, uh, there's only three in this, but there are actually many different types of blades, and they all take many different forms, and they all, take, uh, they all have different attributes and skills that they uh, bestow on the driver. And, uh, but they all kind of separate into three kind of main uh, categories, which is attacker, healer, and tank. And so based on the type of uh, gameplay and play style that you have, you can mix and rearrange these dri drives, or excuse me, um, blades to uh, really fit your play style. And it gives you a lot of freedom into controlling how you play the game. And, it's, it's really, and there's a lot of fun to be had in collecting and finding these uh, blades as well. Now, I've just been uh, slaughtering some herbivores while we were uh, talking there. But uh, now that I've added a few extra people into my party, you'll see I've got uh, Nia and Tora here, uh, each of them with their own uh, supporting characters, let's say. Um, right now, I have three blades at my disposal just for Rex, uh, and I can swap between them once they've charged up adequately. Um, I, s I added these people to my party in part because Tora is a tank. Uh, that's what he's best at. So I've got him drawing aggro from, uh, oh, I've uh, I got, the uh, field armu's kid is now angry at me too. I probably shouldn't have attacked and, that. We can see that um, he's getting the Argo because of that red circle around him, right? Yeah, so he's got all of, oh, that didn't look great. Um, <laughs> he's got all of the aggression of the enemy centered on him, uh, freeing me up to move around into different positions and pull off some of my side and back attacks. Um, now, the arts palette in the past has been a uh, fairly complicated uh, menu system to navigate. What uh, seems to be the case in this game now is we've got the arts palette of uh, just a handful of buttons on the right-hand side, but we've also got the blades on the left-hand side. When I swap between blades, I can bring out a new set of arts. Uh, so instead of having to navigate any menus, I have all of them at my fingertips. I can just tap the blade that I want to bring into battle, which uh, they're charging up right now. Um, I may not, I may kill this guy before I get any blades in here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to swap over to. I just brought him in. He's got his axe. He comes out with all of his arts ready to go. And you'll see that I have uh, some special abilities that I can use for different uh, conditions. Uh, as with the previous Xenoblade games, there's been, uh, we've had like break and topple conditions. Uh, those conditions exist here as well as a few new ones that can chain together. Um, Rex right now doesn't have any, uh, I'll just go ahead and attack him here. Um, Rex doesn't have any ability to break or topple, so I'm relying on my other characters to do that for me. Um, and they're not, really, they're not really into it right now, uh, but we'll probably knock this guy out and move on to a new battle. Um, but I can chain off of my allies' attacks in order to trigger not just break and topple combos, but also blade combos. I'm sorry, I can't resist right. grabbing all of the, the money, <laughs> all of the loot. And these uh, combos that you're talking about, it's great that you have everything at your fingertips. It's literally two button presses to get to any art. So those combos are kind of hard to set up, and they have to be timed specifically. Uh, so it's great to have it so close at your fingertips to get those off. Wait, more gentle herbivores. Come back here. <laughs> Let's fight. Um, just, oh, no. You're so fast. <laughs> you're like a gazelle. <laughs> Yeah, I can just target someone else. <laughs> yeah, so you know, um, if you have your weapon drawn out, you actually travel a little bit slower than you would normally. I was not going to catch that guy. <laughs> we'll just fight someone else. Evolution's been very good to them. Um, so now I've got, uh, let's see, Tora's drawing aggro. Nia is a healer, and uh, so she's doing her healing attacks. Uh, she's actually pulling HP for me. Oh, there's oh, a, we break. Got a break. I'm not going to charge up Fudor in time to take advantage of that uh, break, although if there's a topple, I may have a chance. Uh, I don't think we're going to get to topple oh. off of that. Now, one thing I, I didn't get a chance to talk about before that I, oh, oh, he's been launched. Oh. Someone else launched him. This is, oh, the launch was, I think it's was, passed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was going to show off another of the abilities, but uh, we'll get another opportunity in a second because I wanted to talk about the blade art or the uh, blade abilities right now. Nia's using one of her blade abilities, poison, and you can, or actually it was toxin, um, and now she's poisoned uh, this buffalo. Bulu, bu, bulufo, you bulufo? do it. You yeah. do it. <laughs> um, thank you. Who well, I think is new to this, but many people may have uh, seen that there's a lot of classic enemies from the original game too, like bonnets. Balufo. Balufo? Balu I don't know. Baluf Balufo. Balufo. I'm going to go with that for now. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll keep uh, attacking these gentle creatures of the night. 
um, and uh, see, what, uh, see what attacks we can trigger. One thing I'm kind of holding off on for now is I don't necessarily want to go into the main field because uh, there are going to be some things that will kill me, and I'll show you getting killed inevitably. It's just going to happen. Right. Um, another thing I want to talk about is my basic attacks uh, will trigger automatically, of course, but unlike in previous games, if I'm moving, they're not going to trigger. So I have to stop and think about where I want to be in order to do my basic attacks. Something um, else about that is you don't want to move around all the time either because each automatic attack is a little bit different. You have three steps to that, right? One, two, three. So you can see that the mm -hmm. basic attack is a combo. And I, as I'm building up my arts, I can also trigger. You see that little uh, blue ring was uh, me triggering uh, an art off of my basic attack that helps me charge up a little bit faster and may do a little bit more damage. Right. I got it again right there. Yep. Uh, so even though some of the battle may feel very automatic, there are a lot of real-time actions that you're taking in order to build up your arts and to build up your blade abilities as well. I have my flame ability ready right now, uh, and I might as well finish him off with it. Oh, he's already down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Pyra, that was wasted. Um, Looks like you got oh no, I, I got somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you're just collateral damage, pal. And now you're gone. Um, I'm going to move into some uh, more challenging enemies. Uh, the oasis where all of the gentle creatures come for a nice sip of water <laughs> is maybe not the nicest place I could be. Um, so I'm going to run past a little bit more. Um, there was something else you had. Yeah, sure. While you're running around here, uh, let me ask uh, Takashi-san. In a lot of your games, you prefix the titles with Xeno. I was wondering, just in general, uh, what does the word Xeno mean to you? あの、so the word uh, Zeno really uh, means like something different or something kind of um, not, uh, not uh, familiar. Mm -hmm. And I think in life when we're living, you know, there's, you meet different people and they have different personalities, uh, different backgrounds. And it's the drama between the, the, the react interaction between those people that create the drama of life. And I thought that it would be great if I can drop that drama into video games. And that's why I add uh, Xeno to a lot of my games. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm. Now, uh, I went over and attacked this uh, much more ferocious uh, series of Ferrises. Uh, and they're pack animals, so they started calling in their buddies. And so this battle's going on a lot longer now. Uh, do a little area of effect, attack, see if I can... Is anyone going to be able to topple him, though? That's the real question I have. Because I want to hang out here and see if I can pull a, a, a topple combo out of this. Oops, I did that a little bit early, um, but it was still all right. Uh, now I've triggered the chill uh, effect. You can see the chill bars. Uh, slowly trickling down. Uh, if I were to pull off another, oh, down he goes. If I had time to pull off another uh, blade art, you would get a chance to see one of those blade combos. We will have an opportunity to demonstrate that as we get deeper uh, into this level. Um, but for right now, do, 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 do. you look big. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. And you're angry. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't feel so bad attacking aggressive animals. Uh, one thing I want to point out that's really interesting about this take on uh, the Xenoblade, um, the familiar elements of Xenoblade, um, in the previous game, for example, you had the ability to identify how aggressive an enemy was and how they would spot you. You could see the little eye to indicate that they had a visual range, or you would see whether they were uh, detecting you by sound. Um, and as I mentioned, more importantly, you could tell if they were aggressive enough to attack you uh, on sight. Um, you don't have that in this game, and uh, it's because you're intended now to learn more about the enemies. Oh, topple, 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 oh, punch, yeah, punch. Yeah. Oh, too slow. Oh. But there's... All right, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Um, we'll see if we can do it. I didn't get a chance to switch over to Fudor in time to take advantage of that topple. Um, 
But uh, this time around, you're meant to study the animals. You're meant to study their behaviors and learn uh, through your experiences. You might die along the way. I certainly will. Um, but uh, I'll just use this ability. Um, just keep firing off abilities to charge up my specials. Um, but you'll learn their behaviors, and you'll learn how to fight them uh, through experience and through repeated death over and over again. I'm going to trigger Tora's shard ability now. You can see it charging through his support and uh -huh. doing serious knockback. Uh, shard is still in play. If I were to trigger with a, a oh, complementary nice. ability, again, I would be able to chain off of that. Um, now, in order to demonstrate some of that, I am going to start. I'll grab some HP. I already healed up. But uh, in order to demonstrate that, I'm going to have to head in the direction of town uh, so I can show you it's not just fighting. Um, there's a fairly sizable town on the back of uh, this Titan. Um, now, one thing that we talked about earlier is uh, the way in which the setting shapes the lives of the people in this world. Um, in this oh. town, I wanted, I wanted to ask uh, Takashi-san about the people. Are oh, oh, oh that's big. Uh, that, that's that's a tough just, enemy. Yeah, <laughs> let's just show you what that looks like. Because oh. oh, there's a one hit. I didn't even get my sword out in time. All right, oh, see, can we even? Uh, that's, that's another one hit. He is very territorial. And he's I've got, a uh, monster. I've got my uh, party bar charged up a little bit so I can bring Tora back. Oh, just in time to die. Oh. <laughs> now, as I mentioned before, when you die, I, did I mention this? Who knows? Uh, we'll review it on playback. When you die, uh, you are set back to your latest checkpoint. You don't really lose anything in the process, right. though. Yeah. So it's like it's, it's educational. I just yeah. had a very educational death right yeah. there. Um, but uh, I had a question for Takashi-san about the lives of the people who live on the backs of these titans uh, in all of these different environments that form up the, uh, or that form the world of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. このゼノブレイドの世界を作るいろいろなタイプ、あのえっと、え、巨人類住んでいる人たちについて少しお話いただきたいと思います。はい、え、今ここにあるアルスはグーラと呼ばれているあの、キリン型のやつなんですけど、
Another thing that I really liked about the very first game is when it went through those day and night cycles, it kind of had the same theme music, but it changed a little bit depending on when it was. And that's back for this game, and I'm really glad because I love the music in these games. So we're going to take a quick walk through this town uh, just so that you can get a sense of the scope of the world, the number of activities there are in each place. And also, uh, I want to show you something over here. Um, again, this is very much a, a story of Rex and Pyra and his allies, um, very specifically. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we are... Uh, oh. <laughs> there we are. We're wanted men. Uh, <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've got mug shots. I don't know where they got those mug shots. Um, and we've got a, uh, another driver right here who's studying mm -hmm. them. He hasn't noticed us yet. No, not yet. But uh, why <laughs> give him a chance? We noticed sure. him. Oh, it's you. Hey, wait, you're the guys from the pictures. <laughs> um, and you'll notice he has his own blade there as well. Um, and uh, Tor is drawn as aggro, so he doesn't even notice me. Tor didn't even have his own mugshot up there yet, so he, doesn't, he may not even understand what this battle's about. <laughs> Don't turn around. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, 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 and you'll find that there's a lot of uh, unique and interesting characters in this world. And for example, there's, uh, there's a really powerful driver in a blade that's uh, locked up. And if you uh, decide to challenge him, obviously, if you're uh, able to defeat the character, then you get great items back. But you know, it's a lot of the fun can come from uh, discovering and getting to know these characters and battling with them as well. Now, one thing, uh, before I get too far into the city, I wanted to show off. Uh, you don't have direct control over your other party members uh, in a regular combat, but you can swap between them. Uh, so I just wanted to swap over to Nia, who's riding on the back of her blade. She's a very cat-themed character. You can see her ears. Um, so you do have opportunities to swap between the different characters. And I'm going to get into a battle over here. I mentioned that she's a healer. I just want to show you what that looks like uh, with her blade arts. So Nia's got a special blade where um, she's actually able to ride him. Mm -hmm. And it looks great on the field as you're uh, chasing, uh, riding on uh, blade back through the <laughs> battlefield. Uh, so uh, fight a few more rabbits, I think. Um, just to, you know, thin the population. They yeah. grow like rabbits. Um, so you can see uh, her arts are a little bit different. She's got a full heal art that's super useful. Uh, she also has an HP potion art. Uh, I'll kill some more rabbits, why not? Uh, it's just and then that potion art works really similar to Rex's art that we saw earlier, while yeah. the other healing art is more like a standard, what you would expect, like a healing. One other thing that she has, and I'll try to charge it up during uh, this battle with this slightly tougher rabbit, uh, is she can initiate the break uh, status. Um, so if I can mm. trigger that break, uh, maybe by building up my arts a little bit more. This rabbit might die before I get the break. But here, there I'll is. trigger the ability. You'll at least see the break happen. <laughs> and then you see, once I've triggered break, another character might trigger topple. Uh, and then another trigger or character might trigger the launch status or other types of status. Right. So there's a lot of depth in choosing how you're going to attack and uh, even choosing who your party lead is going to be. I do want to switch back to Rex, which means I'm going to be dependent on my allies to trigger those abilities for me. Let's swap blades uh, mm -hmm. on the battlefield, back to Pyra. Um, so I'm going to run back through that town, show you a little of the architecture, show you a little of the lives of the people. Um, but then before I run out of time, I do want to take on the big bad at the end uh, so I can show off some of these more uh, challenging moments. Do, do, do. And I really, really want to demonstrate some of these combos I've been talking about because right, I mean, right. it would be a serious letdown if I... Uh, tease it the whole way through and then don't actually show it. And there's a lot going on in this town. That's what I love about the towns in these games. There's, it feels alive and there's a lot to do. There's a lot going on. Yeah, just the ambient chatter of people. You can stop and talk to some of the villagers. Um, and build an understanding of the world that you're in. <laughs> I'm going to run out here and just show off. Take a quick look at this warship over here. And so we'll obviously, um, you know, as the, as we uh, work more on the development, we'll obviously be uh, fleshing out and expanding the town and all the activities you can do in in these uh, towns and cities. Oh, that's awesome! I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Here's another uh, another Titan here. Um, I was actually worried that they constructed a warship into the body of this Titan. <laughs> You're so um, morbid. 
Well, it's just, you know, it just seemed like he's got a lot of stuff on him. Um, but Takahashi-san did reassure me that he is still alive and still functioning. Everybody feel better. I was legitimately worried about this. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to, oh, that is an enormous windmill. Let's take a look at it. Where is that enormous? Oh, there it is. Way off in the distance. So we're going to run off. Uh, before I get into this boss battle, though, there's a quick fight with some soldiers. Um, Again, this is uh, tied in very closely to the storyline, the existence of this fort and the existence of these soldiers here. Uh, Takahashi-san, would you mind speaking about the uh, soldiers that we're about to run across and their function here? まあまあこれからあの軍人みたいなキャラクターとあの戦闘が始まるんですが、そのそこについてあのストーリーに少しお話しいただけますでしょうか。そうですね。今ここにいる人たち兵士たちはスペルビアと呼ばれている国の兵士たちなんですけれども、はい、帝国兵です、ね。はい。スペルビアのアルスがもちろん別の場所にあるんですけど、今ここのグーラというところを占領しているみたいなんですね。はい、なのでまああんまりそんなに町の人たちと仲はよろしくない。うん、特にレックスたちとはちょっと敵対関係にある、えー、勢力になります。So these soldiers here are actually imperial soldiers from a different titan, and they've actually come and invaded uh, uh, Golmod. And so the locals aren't really happy about that, and they're kind of in a position where they're、uh, kind of enemies uh, of uh, Rex and his party as well. And that's the kind of、uh, setup that we have going on here. We're making short work of them, though, with our party all together. Yeah, is a, their attack rod is all that's left. Rot, rot. <laughs> Made short short work of、uh, that crew,、uh, which is good because with the time that we have left, that might be enough time to beat or be beaten by this upcoming、uh, upcoming enemy inside of the warship. Well, I do want to stop. Off, I do need a problem. Oh yeah, sorry. That's right. もちろん戦艦にもシームレスに入っていけるっていうのはこのゲームの特徴かなと思います。And I also think、uh, one of the great features about this game is that even going into the airship is very seamless. There's no、uh, loading and transition. You just go right into it. Yeah, and the airship itself is vast. I mean, this this、uh, cargo room that we're fighting in is tremendous. はい。今回ちょっとあのここだけでお見せするってことになるんですけど。You know, all we can show is this section, but、um, it it really is、uh, massive. 今回、ライブ用に用意したちょっと専用のボスっていうところを楽しんで見ていただければなと思います。はい、そして、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、Building up my arts,、uh, building up my、um, blades abilities, especially. What I want to do here is get all of my、uh, all of my characters' blades to have their abilities charge up to appropriate levels so that I can trigger the combos that I want.、Right. Um, so I'm not going to use flame or toxin or shard right now.、Uh, I will attack once I get to level three, I think. I think、right. that's the safest.、Right. Now, now can、stopped. you switch over?、Uh, do I have time? Do I have time?、Oh, <laughs> I didn't have time. You got it. All right.、Oh, well. I want Rich to get this combo off, so I'll talk a little bit more about what we're trying to accomplish here. We have two combos that we're trying to get done, maybe. One is the driver combo, which is what we are about to attempt. Well, topple the, him? Yeah. Topple him? Topple. Somebody <laughs> topple him. <laughs> it may not happen now, but it will happen. <laughs> And the other one is the one that、uh, we previously touched on, the、uh, blade combo, which really makes these boss battles a lot of fun. And you have to think about your strategy a lot if you want to get them done either fast or even like efficiently. And like you were saying, Matt,、um, as you were saying, there's the、uh, blade combo and the、uh, arts combo. And arts combo usually、um, is really、uh, physical and damage, whereas blade combo has a little bit of a more、um, attribute,、uh, elemental attribute to it that、right. makes the gameplay a lot more, as you were saying, strategic and interesting. Yeah, you'll notice that Pyra is、uh, fire themed,、uh, while Fudor here is water themed. And、uh, Kirim, my newest. Oh, okay, oh, topple him. Yes, there yes, it is. Do, and do, launch. Do, 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 do the launch. Do the launch. Yes.、Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I love I love the visuals on that one. It's just hilarious to send him flying, and it does a ton of damage.、Um, but for my blade combo, it isn't、uh, it isn't Fudor that I want.、Um, 
Although, if I can get him toppled again, I'm just going to... I'm going to go for the strong smash. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm at level two. If you look in the right-hand corner, he's not toppled this time. I'm at level two on my arts. Um, oh, but he's broken again. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to get up to level three. And to do that, I am going to need to keep using my arts, even if they're not necessarily the most appropriate art for that moment. We've got Toxin. We've got Shard. We're going to want Kirim for this combo, if right, I remember right. correctly. Didn't break the combo. Just a little bit more of a charge. So let's switch over to Pyra, who's ready, because I can pull off some more uh, some HP, arts. get my arts going. I'm not going to worry too much about trying to do the breaks and topples right now, because um, I really want to do race my way to the level three art, or the level three blade ability. And something that people can look forward to is the launch is not even the end of the combo. There's more after that. So Yeah, it's just that's the end of what oh. we have at our disposal right now. Oh, you're and ready we, to go. We Look got toppled. Me. Okay, I'm ready to go. Going to switch over to Kirim so that all my blades are in place. Thank you for the heads up on that. I'm so caught up in the battle. So we're going to fire off with Toxin first. You'll see that Toxin hits. Did it hit? Are you hitting? You hit. There he is. Uh, and now you look on the right hand side, the bar is going down. I've got two uh, basically tree oh. options I can follow. I'm going to hit virus next, which takes us to the next level on that tree option. And then I need to pay attention here because there's a little bit of action on my part. When plague is ready, that virus is ticking down. I trigger blade. I've got three. Boom. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> All right. I think I might have done it. Did I do it? it Am I good. okay? Are we here? Oh, wow. Are we comboing? I think we're comboing. That looks like oh, a lot of goodness. damage. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the amount of strategy that you have to put into building up those combos. But when you do it, it's really satisfying. Oh, man, it feels so good. And uh, having pulled off that combo, I might actually have a little bit more time than I'd expected on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is nice. Damage. I can kind of chill out and relax and unwind, get a cup of tea, switch back to Pyra pull some HP because we are actually starting to suffer just a little bit. He's got Tora cornered. He's got him boxed <laughs> in. <laughs> like, buddy, no. And there Tora's he goes. Tora's not even on All the right. floor anymore. And there it is. So that's it. With the uh, effective use of uh, both my uh, topple effects and my blade arts, we were able to hew our way through him. And we'll just take a few moments to walk back out with the Merc here and to walk into the cool night air. Um, as we're taking one last walk through the uh, town, I wanted to know if there's anything else that Takashi-san wanted uh, gamers to know about uh, in anticipation of this title. Yeah,まあ、あの、ボスを倒して、あの、もう終わりの近づいてるんですが、あの、ゲーマーの皆さんに対して、あの、高橋さんからメッセージをお伝えしたいものっていうのはありますでしょうか。はい、え、今回はま
We are playing an in-development build. All of the English has not been dropped into this build yet, so you're hearing a lot of Japanese. Obviously, that's not final, but I felt like I should, you know, still yeah, mention definitely. it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's <laughs> if we had two weeks, we could have had all the vo English just voice in. So, so close. E3 just needs to push out a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit more. Yeah. But all right. Well, I think that will about wrap, us up, wrap it up for us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us to take a look at Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And we'd like to thank our special guests, uh, Takashi-san and Yokota-san. Uh, up next, we have Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. So stay tuned. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.